Hey there, extraordinary treasurers. I have a challenge for you. Your board has heard your concern about all the negative numbers and has asked you to set up budget allocations. So where are you going to start? Churches come in so many flavors, it's hard to give any hard and fast budgeting rules. You've got large churches and small churches and they have very different budgeting needs. Churches with healthy bank accounts can have local funds just sitting around with money in them without causing a hardship while a church that has barely enough each month to pay the bills needs a different system. Also, each church has a unique chart of accounts. Some churches simply take every expense out of the church budget bucket. Others give every single item its own bucket, ending up with dozens. Some churches have been allocating for years and others have never allocated, so this would be brand new to them. That said, I can give you some general principles so you can start making your list. First, we have to decide which local funds should be included in the budget allocations. So start by listing all of your local accounts that are used for monthly expenses, especially the local funds that don't typically receive donations. Utility accounts, accounts for various kinds of supplies, lawn care, custodial, phone, and mortgage or loan payment funds if you have any. Include your Sabbath school, and school subsidy funds that usually do receive at least some donations. We're also going to allocate for your annual insurance payment. It's usually sizable and is only paid once a year, so it's good financial management to put aside money for it every month. If you have any active local ministries like Vacation Bible School or Pathfinders that have an annual budget that is set by the board, you can allocate to them as well, if they're only used once or twice a year. You don't need to include them. That leaves out a lot of funds, but it's not necessary or good management to allocate to each obscure or rarely used fund. You end up with a lot of church budget money just sitting there in unused accounts, and then it takes time to transfer it back to church budget later when you don't end up using it. Once you have chosen your funds, we have to figure out how much to allocate to each account. Now, this will require some calculations, but we are treasures, right? So fire up your calculators. Pick an expense, let's say electricity. Choose a recent 12-month period. Probably pre-COVID would be best. The one church I checked recently spent 25 to 30% less on electricity this year over last since they weren't using their buildings as much. So try using a more typical 12-month period if you can. Total up how much you spent on that expense during that period, divide the total by 12, and round up to a whole dollar amount for simplicity. For example, if your church spent $4,478 total for 12 months, you divide that by 12. You get $373.1666666. So we're going to drop the extra numbers, then round up. Electricity. I'd say up to $400, since it tends to go up every year. Do the same for each of the other local funds that you've chosen. Calculate the yearly, divide by 12, and round up a bit. Your allocations will look a lot cleaner with whole dollar amounts rather than cents. Next, you need to figure out how much is coming in through direct donations. If an account has plenty of money coming in from donations, you don't need to fund it at all. But if it has some money coming in, like Sabbath school expense, or a school subsidy, or a loan account, you can allocate less to it than if it was totally budget funded. For example, let's take Sabbath school expense. Let's say you spend around $1,200 a year for expenses, and around $480 comes in through Sabbath school offerings. So you only need $720 annually from all the allocations. So you divide that by 12 and $60 a month is the allocation you would use. If you have any active local ministries that have been given an annual budget, you can just take that budget and divide it up by 12 and allocate that much. Some churches give their ministries their annual budget all up front and then they spend it down through the year, but not all churches can afford to do it that way and allocating it monthly is fine. Once you have your list and your numbers, you can set them all up in Jewel. You're going to go to home page, maintenance, which is on the top bar. It's here in this slide. It's circled in red and yellow. Edit budget allocations. 
This takes you to the Edit Budget Allocations page, and this is what that page looks like. If your church has never set up allocations before, in the From account, you would enter Church Budget, or Local Church Budget, or Combined Budget, whatever your church calls it. In the To account box, begin entering the local funds that you want to have allocated. When you finish with one line, hit Enter on your keyboard and a new line will be available. Or you can use the Insert button to the right. Continue until you're done with the list that you made up. Don't worry about what order you enter them. Jewel will end up reordering them numerically. Jewel will ask you for your total annual budget. If you don't know what that is, just enter an amount that's at least 12 times the monthly allocation total plus a bit more and you'll be fine. The beauty of using Jewel allocations is that they are so easy to edit. After a few months, if it becomes obvious that a particular fund is overfunded or underfunded, the board can vote it and you can change it in seconds. Just go back to Maintenance, Edit Budget Allocations again, and change what is in the Amount box, and then click on the green OK to save it to leave. Some expenses are seasonal and will fluctuate, but don't let the accounts build up thousands of dollars when you only need hundreds a year. And don't let accounts go thousands of dollars in the hole without addressing the situation. Also, if you have overfunded, you can, with board authorization, make a transfer to reverse part of the excess church budget allocation. In this case, $250 of excess office expense funds are being transferred back to church budget. Use the Transfer Funds button on Jewel's homepage and make sure the memo clearly indicates the purpose of the transfer. As long as the funds originally came from church budget, you can safely transfer them back into church budget. So there you have it. Know what the needs are by knowing how much is being spent. Know how much is coming in through offerings. Budget accordingly, based on these two factors. Adjust the budget for unexpected expenses. Adjust the budget when income changes over and over throughout the year. And it is all dependent on accurate, consistent record keeping. Keeping the budget on track will be impossible without it, but it will be a very easy job with accurate, consistent record keeping. Now, there are very few always and nevers in life, but here are a few. Always post to the correct accounts every time. Always keep a close eye on your financial summary and its ending balances. Never make sideways transfers to fill holes in your budget. Don't make transfers without board approval. You don't have that authority. And always, always, if something is not clear or if you have questions, contact your auditor. Now, there's one last very valuable tip, and that is don't use special appeals from the front as your budget strategy. So you see a deficit in audiovisual, and you say to your church, we just purchased a new microphone. Anyone that wants to help pay for it, mark your envelope with new mic and turn it in. Your church combined budget giving is then going to go down as people give to purchase the new mic. This will hurt your budget process since you have less money coming in for everyday expenses and more trust funds sitting in accounts. Since too many people gave for the mic and now you have a healthy equipment account that can't be used for anything else. This will lead to more needs that you don't have money for and more appeals from the front, ultimately resulting in chronic church budget deficits. If you want to mention giving from the front, let people know that consistent giving to combined church budget is the best way to maintain healthy church finances. And remind them of all the various ways that church budget funds are used. And that is it for basic church budgeting. Once you get started, you can fine tune your numbers over time.